Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my final lesson of my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about constructing transformations using your compass and a straight edge. The four main constructions that deal with transformations are translation, reflection, rotation, and dilation. And in today's lesson, we will be looking at how to construct these types of transformation using your compass and straight edge. So let's get started with the first example involving translations. Let's say your given points A, A prime, and Q. Construct point Q prime such that Q prime is the image of Q under the same translation that maps A to A prime. So what does that mean? It means that now we can draw some three points that are random, A, A prime, and Q. And when you draw a line or a vector that goes from A to A prime, that should be the same as Q to Q prime. So basically, you can visualize as follows. Here's A, and let's say you have A prime that is given. So you're going this way, okay? So that is actually also called a vector. I will not cover the word vector in all details because that's something that is covered in pre-calculus. Now, if you're given a point Q, then the goal here is to locate somewhere a point Q prime here by construction such that this line is translated the same direction and the same magnitude, okay? So basically, these two lines have to be parallel and they have to be congruent as well. So let's get started with this construction. So the first thing is draw point A and somewhere on the paper point A prime. Afterwards, you want to connect A and A prime, obviously after you draw point Q. Then you draw a transversal from Q to A, okay? To the line L, actually. Now, what we're going to do here, as you remember in construction, draw a line that is parallel to line L that goes through point Q. And we can do that by the copy angle method. So let's watch this. So here we have a point, point P. And with the compass, we're drawing an arc and let's call that arc S, and we are going to copy that arc from point Q. Then we are going to label the points of intersection. In this case, I pick point B, and I pick point, in this case, point C, okay? Now, here we have another point, and we are going to measure the distance from BC and use the same radius and draw another arc. Now, the point of intersection here, in this case R, we are going to connect it with point Q and then extend that line. So now we ensure that the lines are parallel, okay? So in this case, line H is parallel to line L by the copy angle method. As a matter of fact, as you remember from our postulate, if two lines are parallel, cut by transversal, and the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So now all we need to do is measure the distance from A to A prime and copy it over from point Q. And there you go, you just draw an arc. Now that is the point Q prime, okay? So we're basically done. We translated point Q all the way to point Q prime in the same manner as we translated point A to A prime, okay? So the direction is the same and the length from A to A prime is the same as the length from Q to Q prime. Let's look at another example involving reflections. Given a point P and two intersecting lines L and M, construct the image of P upon reflection over line L. Let B prime be the image of P upon reflection over L, and then construct the image of P prime upon reflection over M. Notice anything interesting? So let's go through this problem really quick before showing the construction. So let's say you have two lines here, okay? 
one line here, call it line L, and let's say you have another line here, call it line M. So let's say you draw a point P over here, and we reflect it over L, okay, so we end up with P prime over here, and now we're reflecting P prime again over line M, okay, to end up, let's call it point P double prime, and that's basically what we want to construct here, okay? So now we have to think about how do we construct, what's the definition of a reflection over a line, um, and then we want to see if we notice anything interesting here, okay? So let's go on with the construction. So here's the construction. First, you construct line L, then you construct a random line M such they both intersect, and then we label somewhere a point P. Now, in order to construct the reflection of P under line L, we need to make sure that line L is the perpendicular bisector of the segment from P to P prime. So we first construct a perpendicular from point P to line L, as you can see here. So now we label those arcs, arcs B and C, and we construct a line through P that goes through the arcs of intersections. Now, the distance also needs to be the same. So we measure the distance from P to line L and draw an arc on the other side and label that point P prime. Now we repeat this entire process uh, by constructing a reflection of P prime over line M. So again, we construct a perpendicular from P to line M, as you can see here. And now we measure the distance from P prime to line M and copy it on the other side. Call that point P double prime. Now, what do you notice here? Something interesting occurs here, right? If you compare point P, P prime and P double prime, that now the intersection of line L and M become the point of rotation. So if you draw a circle, you can see that uh, point P, P prime and P double prime, they're all equidistant from point R. And so therefore you can express P to P prime and P double prime as a rotation about the point of intersection between line L and M. So that's something that we actually learned in the previous YouTube video, okay? So here's a demonstration on how to construct a dilation of a geometric figure, okay? First, let's say you draw a triangle A, B, and C. You connect the points to form a triangle. And let's say we want to have a scale factor of one half and point B is the center of dilation. So we place a point P somewhere. And now what we want to do is draw a line from each vertices of the polygon to point P, okay? And again, again this works for any polygon, not just a triangle. Uh, now we want to mark the half of the line because the scale factor is one half. So how do we do that? We bisect each line here, okay? And again, this can be constructed using a compass and straight edge. This is up to you to do now. Now we're gonna join these. So now we know that A1 and B1 is parallel to A and B. You can also think of them as A prime, B prime. Now A1, C1 is also parallel to A and C. And then we have C1, B1 is parallel to segment CB, okay? Perfect. And what we have here is now a dilation by a scale factor of one half. Now, 
how would you deal with a scale factor of greater than one? You would actually extend this line PA, PC, and PB, and you would actually construct the same segment or the length from PA, PC, and PB on the other side, the same length to, for example, have a scale factor of two. So if you want to have, for example, a scale factor of a third, what do you do then? Then, then you would have to divide the segment into three congruent segments, okay? So that's another lesson that we actually learned in previous lessons, okay? Finally, let's see how we can construct a rotation of a triangle ABC over a point P counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So first, you label points A, B, and C. So you connect the points to construct a triangle. So the next thing is to construct a point P. And now what we want to do is draw circles with radii of PA, PB, and PC respectively. So that means that the triangle can now be constructed anywhere along the circle. So in order to make a perpendicular, because we want to rotate the triangle by 90 degrees counterclockwise, uh, we are going to construct a perpendicular uh, to line L through point P. So the first point of intersection, let's call it A1, that is the image of point A. Now then you measure the distance from A to B and wherever they intersect, let's call it B1, and we measure the distance from B to C and wherever that intersects with the outer circle, let's call it C1. Now we basically have all the three points rotated by 90 degrees. So all we need to do is connect them to have our, our triangle that is rotated by 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I really hope you enjoyed today's and final lesson on constructing transformations. Again, we learned how to construct translations, reflections, dilations, and rotations. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section of the YouTube video. Have a fantastic day.